All right, guys, we're back. We've already done the intro for this Elon, so we don't need to do it again. All right, what we're going to do is it's two days after the birthday party. We smoked all that pork. You going to say bye? Bye. She's been playing and drawing. All right, so it's two days after the birthday party. I've got some jars over here that I've just heated up and got ready. Here's all the pork that I smoked that's, that's left over. Canner is on and ready to roll. I'm going to flip it on and get it to heat. I'm going to let you guys watch me pack these jars and we're going to can some meat. You guys have been asking for it. Here it comes. So I'm going to turn you around here to these jars. Make sure that we're good to go. Might even actually sit you all the way down here. That looks good. Let me turn this eye on first. Got the stove on. Let it be heating. The house is a mess. We're still recovering from this party. Let's see. And I'm just going to simply pack these jars with this meat. And I probably will add just a touch of water to these guys. So um, the reason for that is this meat it was smoked. So it's not as juicy as when you wet pack or raw pack. Um, this meat uh, so I might add uh, it'd probably be less than a quarter cup you want to press this down really good because if not you'll get a lot of voids in there and you want to make sure that you're also you're also making your big chunks broken up this is going to cook even more even though it's already cooked and you can eat it, and I probably will be eating some as you watch me. Um, as you go. So I'll put the water in at the end. We'll figure out how much we want to actually put in there. We'll pack these in. I should have enough to do one full run, it looks like. Um, we cooked about 120-something pounds of meat. And this is all that's left is this one two-gallon bag full. So... That's pretty good. I put the barky pieces in too. I have some friends that don't like to put it or say that it gives it a little bit of a crazy taste. I'll keep some of it and I'll eat it in a minute. But for the most part, I like the barky pieces in there as well. I think it gives it a good flavor. It doesn't look as pretty in the jars, but that's okay. I'm not looking for pretty. I'm looking for tasty. So I'm leaving about... A half inch head space in these jars. So, trying to break up the bigger clumps as we go. This is all going to be linked in with the smoking process and how we smoked it and the progress as we went to pulling the meat afterward. That was a long day, guys. I started at 4 in the morning and did not get in bed that night until way after midnight. So, lots of fun. Party was great. Had about 35 people show up. Elon got spoiled more than normal. Um, she enjoyed it immensely. So, that's always a good thing. I may not have enough to get a full run, so we may have to do some wet jars in here. A little bit. Okay. You gotta make sure you wipe your rims on these really good because you are using pork, so it's very greasy. So if you don't take a, I, I'm gonna use a, actually a paper towel when I do this to wipe it because it tends to pull that off a little bit more than a wash rag or a dish towel and I know you're just listening to me talk right now but that's part of it we have got some bacon that we need to make too off of this pig that I have got to get 
cured and smoked. I did wash my hands before we got started. <laughs> so, it's a pretty big chunk still. And this will be great for soups, sandwiches, just doing the barbecue. Um, this doesn't have any barbecue sauce in it. All it has is the meat and what the seasonings were that went on to that. So, I might get all of them. I don't know. We'll find out here in a second. So you can just take this, pop it out, put it straight into the to a soup or a barbecue or heck you can make barbecue burritos and turn anything into a burrito um, so yeah let's put that down here three more jars to go I think I might be one short but maybe we'll just do a light pack on one of them or something see how it comes out But for everybody that sent gifts and did all that, we appreciate you a whole lot. It was really nice to feel that love. I know we didn't put any videos out last week, but I hope you all understand that the live and the, I think, actually I think we put one out on Monday, but the live and that stuff was all I was planning on last week because I just had so much stuff to do get ready for this birthday party and barbecue that I really couldn't get a video out to you guys. So I could have probably planned a little better and made it happen. Ooh, looks like I'm going to be at seven, guys. But that's okay. <clears throat> Yep, seven's gonna be it. I thought I could get nine, but if I use the barky pieces, I probably could. I've still got birthday cake sitting everywhere. I've still got all that stuff going. I am gonna add just a little bit of canning salt, maybe a quarter to a half of a teaspoon to mm -hmm. these. I don't want to put that too close to the camera. And uh, a little bit of water. I'll put the, the salt really probably isn't needed on this because it's got salt and sugar and stuff from the from the uh, curing that I did on it and the rub that I did on it. But caution on the side of air. And how to get a bite um, we'll put a little salt in it just to help that process okay let me grab my salt just using canning salt regular Morton's canning salt I think I'm gonna go with a quarter teaspoon in each one of these since they already have what they have in them this video will probably not be out for a day or two we've been having a real rough time with the internet now as you guys see me do this, you can go, oh, he's using tap water. My water comes straight from the mountain. So let me grab my measuring cup. I don't want this water to be cold, but I don't want it to be hot. There we go. Like I said, I'm not going to put much water in here. Maybe a couple of tablespoons. Eighth of a cup. Just enough to give it a little bit more moisture than what's going to come out of the meat. Maybe a 
touch more. I want it to come up pretty much to the top and all it's going to do is make a beautiful a beautiful little gravy put the rings on tighten them stick them in the canner let's see if I can Ring these and do everything one handed and video. Put them in the canner. Water's boiling on that canner. Uh, hunting season started for us. Um, this week actually closed. We have a water's good and boiling down there um we have a velvet hunt we did not get to participate in because we were too busy getting the house cleaned up everything was pretty dry um or pretty pretty wet it would have been a great time to have been in the woods hunting but it didn't do it Now my canner takes eight pints, so what we're going to have to do is I will actually run a pint of water as my eight pint, eighth pint with a jar. I'll lose a lose a lid. I could probably use it again, but I don't like to reuse lids. So I know people will say. Well, that'll bust on you, Chris. I've only had one bust on me ever doing it this way. So, there they are. Water's boiling. Now, let me go in and tell you this. I had a lot of complaints when I did the mixed vegetable thing because I said 10 pounds for 15 minutes. When I'm talking about my poundage and my time for cooking in the pressure cooker, that 15 minutes is when I reach pressure. So right now, that's been put into the hot water. It's cooking right now. When I put on the lid, when I get everything done, and I let it go until steam's coming out, it's probably cooked for 10 or 15 minutes. Then it's got to come up to poundage, so another 5 or 6 minutes. So then it goes in, and you have another 15 minutes of, on the mixed vegetables, another 15 minutes of pressure time. So it's probably cooked for 45 minutes. When I say my time, that's once it reaches to pressure in the canner. This is going to end up, it's already cooked, so I'm going to do it at 15 pounds for 30 minutes. I may let it go a little bit longer because it's really cool today, but it'll go for um, 15 pounds for 30 to 45 minutes if you want to be really, really safe, but I think 30 is going to be fine. So let me get this lid on here, and then we'll do a signing off. Let me see if I can get everything going. My canner, like I've told you guys before, is a, a Presto, it's an older Presto canner, and for some reason we like to fight a lot. Okay, with getting on to the pot. Come on, there you go. Well, maybe, maybe not. Okay guys, we are tr trying our best for some reason today. It's even giving me a harder time than normal. Which isn't that abnormal. You gotta wait. Well, why in the world 
am I having a hard time? Or at least this hard of a time. Maybe I'll can meat today, guys. Maybe I'll be sitting here playing with this lid for the next four hours. Wow. Let's turn the pot around. smokes there success <laughs> that was like a monkey trying to wrestle a football boys and girls that is crazy never had that much trouble ever putting that lid on so anyway we got bags of birthday present wrapping paper and everything so here you go mine has got a gauge on it I will wait till it gets to about 10 pounds. I'll reduce the heat just a little. It'll build slowly. And we're going to run this one on 15. I'll wait until there's smoke coming out. Or it's not smoke, but steam coming out. Then I'll place on my weight. And this canner, you actually don't get a real jiggle on it. Because you got the pressure gauge and you can pretty well time that. Let it seal up. All right, guys. With that being said, we'll be back. Show you the end product. And then uh, we'll sign off for you for the last time on the first canning meet with Chris. All right, guys, bye. All right, guys, this is going to end it up. We're starting to pull out these jars of pork. They look amazing. I'm trying to get a hold of one here to show y'all. Look in there. Ooh, look at that beautifulness. Oh, yeah. Cold summer or cold winter day after a good long hunt and that will be some fine fine eating look at that oh yeah so we're gonna do a cinnamon here on the towel and then we'll cover them up the juice looks like it's gonna be perfect in them as far as amount let's boot these to touch them hold that heat just a little bit longer I had a lot of questions the last time I did the, the mixed vegetable canning of why I was covering them with a towel well the reason for that is is it gives them a slower um, cool down and allows you a better success rate on your lid sealing that is the answer to the question y'all have asked. So, before I cover these up, check that stuff out. Still boiling in there. Look at that. That's amazing. What you can do on the homestead. Now, that's only seven cans of meat, guys, but that's seven meals for my family. And I don't know of too many people other than the YouTube community that are homesteaders and gardeners that are doing this at this level of placing this stuff up. So what I'm going to show you now, I got those covered up a little bit, I need to cover them up with another towel, is, bam, these are pickled beans, we got some hot ones and some regular ones, and this is just some um, half runners. Up here is deer meat. All the way across, there's some other stuff in front. Those are preserves. Then we'll turn around over here. We got more half runners. We've got some Kentucky Wonders, pickles, and sauce base slash soup base up there out of the German Johnson's. Um, the black, a few black crims mixed in there and uh, the Cherokee purple. And you can tell the difference in the Cherokee purple. Look how dark those are compared to those German Johnsons. So, Elin, come here. Let's say goodbye to everybody. Come here. We've got a mess of toys. Look at this toys, guys. This is all the stuff you guys sent and she got for her birthday. 
She's over here drawing a beautiful picture. Here you go. Look up here. Look up here. God bless. And we're out of here. See you later.